Hi guys, welcome back to the Called to Lead podcast. If you have ever wanted to peek behind the lens of another top leader, maybe you are a leader in a different company and you're wanting to learn a little bit more about what their business looks like, how they are able to build their team and build a passive income through serving and helping others win big. I have some big news to share with you in case you haven't heard it yet. I'm going to be partnering with my mentor, Sarah Davies. She's kind of a big deal. Well, my friends, we are seriously so excited to share all our secrets with you on this free workshop on Monday, November the 14th at 1 p.m. Eastern. I give you kind of a peek behind the curtain of how we run our businesses and how we are so excited to be able to lift up the industry by creating a conversation of some different yet timeless ways that you can do this business in the ways that have been proven to work, not just in our teams, but in the teams of countless others. So if you're a network marketing leader or you have aspirations of growing and scaling your business in direct sales or social selling, but you want to kind of have a little bit more tangible vision of what that looks like, how it works, and some timeless tips and principles from leaders who have been right where you are today, we cannot wait to share more with you on this free workshop. So spots are definitely limited. So head on over to heatherkburge.com slash workshop to snag your spot on our list for this upcoming workshop. You can also text the word workshop to my business cell, which is 912-405-8912 and get a link to hop on over on that list as well. So I am so excited to get into today's episode where it's going to be sharing a a little bit of a high-level principle that exemplifies some of what we are going to be talking about on the workshop. And it's a game changer, you guys, because it is a way to simplify what your path as a network marketing leader is likely going to look like, and it might define exactly where you are in your business today. So let's get into the episode. Are you dreaming of making a long-term income and impact beyond your own efforts, but feel like you're struggling to replicate your results? I'm Heather, a former burned out boutique owner turned top network marketing leader, and I've learned the hard way that you don't have to do all the things all on your own. Now, my passion is helping social sellers scale their business by choosing faith over fear and using simple duplicatable systems without having to sell your soul to social media. I'm so excited to share with you simple tips, tricks, and tools to help you take your business to the next level. In each episode, I'll share faith-focused wisdom, proven systems that your team can duplicate, and inspiring stories from other leaders who have been right where you are today. Are you ready to grow your team, find joy and fulfillment, and feel free? Break out your favorite pen and notebook, and let's dive in. So today I was doing a coaching call for our team and one of the questions, it was kind of a help desk where anybody could hop on and ask anything. And one of the questions was, what do you do when you feel stuck or overwhelmed with just trying to balance all of it, balance growing your own personal sales within your network marketing business, serving your team, maybe when they feel stuck or when they feel overwhelmed? And I wanted to share something that's been on my heart for a minute, and I've wanted to share on this podcast, and the timing is just so perfect to answer this question because you might be feeling the same way. So if you feel a little bit overwhelmed trying to navigate what it looks like to still even grow your income that your personal sales and your personal effort can contribute to your bottom line and running a profitable business, but yet you know and you see the value of the long term in building a team and a passive income through helping others get what they want. So I'm going to share just a really simple strategy that defines the path of a lot of leaders in network marketing, myself included. (laughs) And the lessons I'm going to talk about today are specific to my story and my journey. And I even talked a little bit about it on the last episode where Sarah Davies interviewed me and shared what my journey looked like moving from a traditional business owner into network marketing and how the last five and a half years have just been kind of wild. So As I mentioned on the call with Sarah, I definitely hit the ground running, and that's kind of what most leaders 
when they, like if they're looking back on their journey (laughs) in network marketing, most leaders start pretty quickly with their own personal selves. Occasionally, I've heard stories of people who kind of got a slow start and then things kind of turned on. And then what tends to happen next is they catch the inspiration, like I did, to build more of a passive income and they find the fulfillment in helping other people. And especially if they are naturally a helper themselves and they're the type that want to do everything for everybody and they want to teach everything and provide all kinds of resources, which definitely that's how I was, they can tend to shift their focus away from their personal business and on to serving their team. And that's exactly what I did as well. And then finally, the one differentiator that I noticed that helped me go from that feeling of being stuck, or to be honest, I was going backwards. I've shared this story a couple of times, but I hit a major rank in our company by pushing for it and kind of, I don't want to say dragging my team over the line, but the the gals that rank, it wasn't really their goal to rank. It was really my goal for them to rank. And I... <sighs> regret pushing them because several of them actually, I think most of the girls aren't even in the business anymore. And I hate to think what they, how they felt. And I talked about how I felt when I was pushed by my mentor. And honestly, the result that that caused in my business in trying to push for something just because it was a carrot dangled of a rank in my business, it actually had the negative and opposite result and hindered my business because I not only didn't get paid at that rank, nor the rank just prior to that, but I actually went two steps backwards and fell to a rank that I had actually never or hadn't been paid at in literally years at that point. And I was just like, wow, where do I go from here? How do I, how do I get back to this? And to be honest, it was a huge mental shift in taking my focus away from just focusing on my own personal business to where I was just focusing on them and finally focusing on us and together and what I could do in my own personal business that I could teach to them, what I could learn from my team for those that were working and were building and growing that I could implement and essentially a way that we could work together to grow together. And so I thought about this in terms of three simple words that I'm going to share today, and that is me, them, we. And that, my friends, just to simplify it, if you want to soar in your business and you want to go from feeling stuck or overwhelmed and trying to balance all the things is you want to get past that me or them phase and move into the we phase. So I'm going to talk more specifically about each one of these for a second on this episode and give you some practical tips to kind of see where you are on this path and how you can get to the we phase as quick as possible. So the me phase and how to know if you are in this phase is you're not really worried about what your teamies are doing. You have a laser focus goal of sharing and creating content and getting your product in the hands of as many people as possible. You are fired up and you love what you're doing and you're just really excited about your own personal business. And you're not really worried at that point about what your team is doing. The crazy thing is that kind of energy almost always relates to building your team, meaning people are naturally going to want to join you when they feel that energy and that excitement and the passion. So when you're in the me phase, people want to join you. They want to do it with you. And you're kind of probably in the overwhelm phase right there where you're like, okay, um, I don't don't really know how to serve them. I'm just over here hustling on my own. I don't have time for this. I don't even know if I want, you know, to to grow this team or, you know, hit this rank. You're kind of in that, that me phase at that point. And then one of two things is probably going to happen if you're in that me phase. One, you are going to be inspired by the story of someone on your team, maybe a leader or a mentor, or maybe it's me or a leader in another company who has the time freedom to not have to hustle like quite like you do in terms of building their own personal business. But yeah, they're making an incredible income and impact, and they seem to be really fulfilled in their freedom and in their business because they have built and navigated what it looks like to essentially build an army, a team to sell and share the product. And it kind of, at that point, you're kind of looking at them like, well, what are they doing? <laughs> and can I do that same thing too? And so that's, it's either that and you kind of are, uh, again, inspired by a top leader and you're like, okay, I want that. Now, how do I do that? Or you're going to get burned out. 
and you're going to hit this wall where you're like, I just don't know that I want to do this anymore. Meaning, I don't know that I want to spend hours and hours creating content or, you know, doing party after party after party or in person makeover, just going crazy. So the focus on your own personal cells can start to feel a little exhausting and you can kind of only go at that pace for so long, not to mention the fulfillment of you being the one to achieve that success. It can sometimes be a little bit empty. I mean, yes, sometimes the money can be nice. And yes, you know, the the early successes and the feeling of being able to accomplish what you accomplish in your business can be a good thing. But it starts to just kind of feel a little bit empty and, to be honest, a little bit exhausting. And so then you kind of look at your team and you're like, wow, why is it no one taking it as seriously as I am? Or how can I help them take this more seriously? Or how can I help them experience what I'm experiencing? Because a lot of times if you're doing really well in that me phase, your them, your people (laughs) who have joined you might be a little intimidated or kind of comparing them, themselves and their journey to yours and feeling like they could never do what you do. And so then they're not really doing anything because they might not want to do what it is that you're doing in, in your business because you might be making it look a little too hard, right? So that's the me phase and the kind of shifting into the them phase. So then what the them phase looks like is you dial back on your personal cells and you shift your focus onto your team. And what that at least looks like for me is I started doing weekly team trainings and I, you know, implemented my systems and I would do coaching calls with my team at first individually. And I was just so focused on how I could help my team that I started to neglect my own personal selves, which guess what? Then my income started to drop because my team hadn't really duplicated or grown wide enough or deep enough to create the kind of volume necessary to bring in that passive income. And because I wasn't operating at that same pace off for my personal selves, then not only am I trying to divide my time and attention between my own business and my team's business, but my check is starting to drop and my money is going backwards, right? And so you might be feeling in that same phase. And if you are, that's how you know you're solidly in the them phase is you've shifted your time and energy onto serving your team away from your own personal business. And once again, you might be in a phase where you could even be turning off certain leaders on your team from wanting to grow and wanting to rank because they don't want to do what they see you do. And actually, I can recall I had an artist who was really amazing. She reached the top 10% of the company, and she had really strong personal sales and good residual reorders. But she got to a point where she literally said to me, Heather, I could never do what you do. And I was like, wait, what? Yes, of course you could. Yes, absolutely. And she's like, no, I don't, to be honest, I don't, I don't want to do what you do as a leader. And I was like, oh. And I had to kind of wrap my brain around that, and I had to wrap my brain around Like, wow, what kind of example am I setting by, I don't want to say doing too many things for my team, but by either just showing up and feeling like I was super busy in terms of creating all these challenges and these, this content and these trainings and showing up consistently in my business to serve them, but yet they were feeling uninspired by it. It's kind of, you hit this, you hit this point where you're like, wait, (laughs) what am I doing wrong? And that's when you hit that, that again, like if you weren't already feeling burned out from your own personal stuff, then you really start to feel burned out and you start to feel like you're going backwards. So my friends, if this is you, good news, I have a solution for you. And again, I don't want to oversimplify this, but what you need to do is you need to get to the we phase as quickly as possible. And here's what I mean by that. Here's what that looks like. You need to get to where you are not only focusing on your team and what you want them to do or teaching them what to do, because guess what? They're not going to do what you tell them to do. They're going to do what they see you do. So what do you need to do? You need to exemplify the things that you want them to do. So if you want them to sell, if you want them to share the new holiday products, if you want them to bring on new distributors, what do you think you need to do? You need to set that example of doing it. And how do you need to do it? Well, number one, you can start by doing what you did at the very beginning, kind of go back to that me phase. What worked for you then? 
Or you can try something new. Again, if you're in burnout and I have been there, that's one of the reasons why I stepped away from so, uh, social media. I've shared my journey and dialing my back my pace in my business. And for me, I realized that the rat, rat race of trying to grow my Instagram or feeling like I was a slave to social media, that that was not serving my family. It was not serving my time well. And to be honest, that example of trying to do that wasn't even serving my team well. So then what I did is I thought, okay, well, what did I do to build my team, my business at the very beginning? Or what are some new things that I could try, like text marketing or in-person networking, like the BNI example. I've got that an entire episode on how BNI has been a game changer for my business already. Business Networking International is what that is. And I'll share the link to that in the show notes. And so in the we phase, you're doing things in order to lead by example. You're not doing things strictly because you want them to work for you. You're doing them because you're going to learn something from it. And that's what you can show and exemplify to your team. So when you're in the we phase, you're focused on learning out loud. You are sharing as much of the things that you are doing with your team. You're inspired to do more things because then you can tell your teams what's working. You're hearing and learning from those on your team who are having success or maybe some of your sideline leaders who are having success and you're implementing those things in your business. And essentially what you're doing is you're working together because you're not just focused on building your own personal business, but you're focused on involving and including your team along that journey as well. So some tangible examples of what you can do with this is you can set a goal for yourself and share that goal with them. So maybe you have, again, a holiday incentive or a special product that your company has dropped and you have a personal goal to sell 10 of, say, a holiday collection. Why don't you invite your direct artist or even your entire team to do that with you? Or I think back, I think one of the biggest pivotal shifts for building my business when I finally kind of entered into that we phase was headed into the holidays. We did a challenge called the $500 for Christmas. And I looked at our comp plan and figured out, okay, team sales aside, what would someone need to sell in makeup to bring home $500 at least for their family before the holidays? And so I reverse engineered and did the math and in our company, that meant that that distributor would need to sell $1,666.67. And that would put them in our 30% commission bracket, which would equate to $500 in personal commissions. And so our average new order, I would probably say, is somewhere around that $200 mark. So if you average or if you divide $1,667 by $200, that is eight, a little over eight new customers. So even if you dial that back and you got six new customers and maybe five, five or more reorders of around 100, that would do that trick too. And so what I did is I invited our entire team to take that challenge. And of course, not everybody did. But what I did is I cheered them on along the way. And I could look in my back office and I attract the sales and I would update maybe every every week, I think it was, I would update who was actually on track to making that $500 a week before Christmas. And it was one of those examples of just a small goal that honestly anybody could do. And I even had people hop on and train and share what they were doing in order to get those sales and just share fresh ideas, things that maybe I wasn't even doing in my business. And that, my friends, is a perfect example of what that we phase looks like, is instead of just telling that people what to do, I was doing something tangibly right alongside them, and I was inviting them to share with me and everybody else how they were doing it as well. And so, friends, if you want to learn some more about these tangible tips and some ideas and examples of what it looks like to move on this path in network marketing from that me to them to we phase, I definitely invite you to attend the free workshop that Sarah Davies and I are putting on called Do Less, Earn More, Your Path to a Life-Changing Network Marketing Business. And essentially, this example is a lot of a simple way of explaining what if we're going to be talking about and sharing what 
our journeys looked like, we're going to be giving you a peek behind the lens of what our businesses look like. And so if you've ever kind of wanted to do that, if you, I know when I was building my business, especially when I was in the me and the them phase, <laughs> but even the we phase, it's a great, it's just a great thing to do too, is just to figure out what's working for other people. And you might know what some of the top leaders are doing in your company, but do you know what's working for others in other companies? And are you looking for that inspiration? for how you can do the same. Well, that's exactly what Sarah and I are going to be sharing in this workshop. And I would seriously be so excited for you to jump in and kind of see where you are on that path. We are going to have a fun interactive quiz and lots of just nitty gritty information for you. And we're also going to be sharing more about our upcoming coaching program called Replicate Your Results, where essentially we're going to be guiding you through exactly the framework that's worked for not only our business, but in the business of countless others on our teams. And so it all starts with this free workshop, which the Do Less, Earn More workshop, you can go to heatherkburge.com slash workshop, or you can text the word workshop to 912-405-8912. So again, that is the word workshop to 912-405-8912. And that will automatically get you the link to register to snag one of the spots because we actually are using a really cool new innovative software that is going to make it really fun and interactive and something like you probably haven't seen before. We're really, really excited about it. We're going to be doing prizes and giveaways even just for hanging out with us and (laughs) tuning into all the fun. So if you want to snag one of the spots because this platform does limit the number of attendees, then just head on over and register, my friends, because we're less than a week away. And I don't know if and when it's going to sell out or fill up, but I would love to see you there. So feel free to share away with your friends and with your team. You can just click the three little dots on Apple or just click and share away with your teams. And if you feel like you have people on your team who need to hear this message, who have been telling you maybe they feel stuck in their business, or maybe they're feeling a little bit overwhelmed trying to balance it all, send them this episode because this is a perfect example of what we call a third-party tool, which is essentially just somebody other than yourself who is sharing some wisdom or helpful value that can make a difference in their business or in their life. And so hopefully this episode has done that for you and it's short and sweet, less than 20 minutes, and hopefully something that can not only serve you and your business, but serve your team as well. So share away, go ahead and hit the subscribe or follow button wherever you're listening if you want more episodes just like this. And I'm so grateful as always for your time and cannot wait to see you on the workshop. Yay. I'm so grateful for your time with me today. Feel free to check out heatherkburge.com for all the scoop on all the things. Also, I've got a huge favor. If you found any value from today's episode, would you mind leaving me a quick review or even better, share with a friend by clicking those three little dots at the bottom of your screen. Sending you big hugs.